We are here today with Donald Russell Russ Dahlberg, and you were born December 19th, 1918, in Mount Washington, Pennsylvania. In, uh, Pittsburgh, the Mount Washington section of the city. So what can you tell me about some of your first memories uh, growing up um, outside of Pittsburgh in mm. around 1918? Mm. <clears throat> well, I guess that would be, <clears throat> well, we lived on Bertha Street there, and uh, 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 it was a regular residential, middle class street. Uh, so, uh, th things, I, there, there weren't any other young kids that I met, met so, uh, uh, my activities were basically confined to something in the house. Now, in in, in your neighborhood, were there uh, a lot of cars? Was it still horses? What what was the the means of transportation? Oh yes, they, they still had them there. Uh, 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 it's it's up in hill there in that area there. So uh, there were. Uh, uh, you, you had the automo automotive age had mm -hmm. had gotten up there though. I remember delivery trucks. You were born when Woodrow Wilson was president, correct? I imagine that's probably correct. Yes. Mm. I, I I did some quick math, and mm. it looks like you've been alive for more than half the presidents that this country has ever had. So, so you, 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 it's it's quite a while. You had mentioned that your father um, was at sea a lot, correct? Or, or was 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 on the lakes a lot? Um, well, actually, um, he came from a, a Swedish group that emigrated uh, and lived uh, up there in the central uh, North Pennsylvania. I'd say maybe something like 30 or 40 miles uh, west of State College up in that area. And with uh, two of his sisters went to Pittsburgh and got jobs. So he went down there to get a job, at which he succeeded. And that's where he met my mother. Uh, worked at a department store, I guess, in the stock room. And uh, she... Uh, was selling ladies' gloves. She was from an English family. My folks were married on New Year's Day, 1918. And uh, we, we stayed in Pittsburgh there for uh, about five years because my mother had the help of her family there. And uh, then when I was in the first grade, we moved to the Cleveland area because he could come down there every now and then, and uh, he'd see her for a short time. So I grew up in a suburb of Cleveland named Blakewood, which uh, had a population of about 65,000 and uh, was famous for its, its homes. So, well, anyway, from college then, I went into the uh, uh, U.S. Steel Corporation, uh, and the, the uh, shipping line had war had relationships that I with U.S. Steel, the, the ship line I worked with. So they asked me, "Do you want to go up to the Iron Range, or do you want to work around here?" So I took Pittsburgh because I knew people there. Uh, including some relatives. I became a metallurgical observer, and that's not a desk job. You're right out there on the floor uh, working uh, sometimes about a, just a little further than you are from me. That's stuff about 2,000 degrees. In 1941 is when you, you were drafted. Yeah, Where I got a six-month deferment. Mm -hmm. That took me to July, mm -hmm. 1942, and that's when I got went into active service. 
after the deferment expired, they picked me up and took me into Pittsburgh uh, via railroad or a bunch mm -hmm. of us, and we got further instructions, and uh, then we went back and uh, collected stuff and so forth in a couple, a couple of days. Mm -hmm and went back for another train riding off. We went, our whole car full, maybe a couple of cars, took us to Fort Meade, Maryland. They took us in the barracks and gave you a bunk and said, this is it. And uh, then we were uh, give a, it's fitted out with uniforms and uh, uh, after a physical examination and uh, all, all your civilian clothes were packed up and shipped out and there you were in mm -hmm. uniform uh, then uh, I was there for uh, another I'd say another 10 days or so and all of a sudden one morning they say pick up your stuff and let's go and I'm still at, uh, at Meade, mm -hmm. and they marched us down. There were about a dozen of us, I guess, and we we got uh, on on the train, and it took us to Aberdeen, where they had a what they call a Tunerville trolley there, and they they took you into headquarters. Mm -hmm. and, uh, assigned you this, uh, I, I think I went to Company C or of the 3rd Battalion or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, then uh, you settled down for a couple of days there, getting stuff in, and then one day you reported to uh, this, to the meeting and you, mm -hmm. you met, met the uh, guys you were going to be associated with there, and that was it. And I say I was in the ammunition section, mm -hmm. so I got used to handling all small arms, artillery, and bombs. And of course, there was a bu bunch of stuff there, because the small arms, for example, we had pistols, rifles, carbines, shotguns, Pyrotechnic pistols, the stuff you never thought of. <laughs> when I was drafted and took the the uh, tests, they had a a uh, mechanical aptitude test, and a clerical aptitude test, and a general aptitude test. You uh, were asked to uh, indicate your preferences. To, what you want, of course, I guess Air, Air Force got a lot, or Air Corps actually at that time, because that was the glamour stuff. But I picked ordnance as artillery for my second choice, and the engineers for my third. And I, I got ordnance, and I, I wound at Aberdeen Proving Ground in the ammunition section. I put in two years in the ranks, and then I put into OCS, and uh, the Army sent me to the Navy Torpedo School, <laughs> which never figured. Mm. Uh, took that and then reported uh, out west. When that uh, finished, uh, I got sent to uh, uh, the University of California in Berkeley for a course in the Chinese language. And then I got sent overseas, traveled by uh, Navy transport. It took us almost a month to get there from San Pedro, California to Perth, Australia. We, we were dodging. Jap what they think were Japanese submarines. So we zigzagged all day and traveled uh, under a blackout all night. 
Then we went from Perth after picking up supplies to Calcutta, and I, then I flew over the hump into uh, China, South China, and Kunming, and there I worked with, in Kunming with, with the Chinese Combat Command. And when the war ended, I went down to, Ch to Shanghai, and I was with the Chinese Port Command, and then uh, we moved northward to three different moves in support uh, of the Chinese army. Finally, well, uh, we were finished that, and I went back, went back uh, via Nanking, and I wound up in the Peking Executive Headquarters, and uh, from there I came home to the U.S. and left active duty in 1947. I had five years in. I stayed in the uh, reserves, active reserves, so to, to, I got a total of 29 years of uh, service, uh, and that included reservists in Pittsburgh, in New York City, and then in New Jersey. I wound up as uh, a battalion commander of the 338th uh, Ordnance Maintenance Battalion. Mm -hmm. I got discharged in 1971. A couple of questions that I do have. Mm -hmm. you, you came back in 1947. Yeah. And you got married in 1948, correct? Yeah. Okay. And, and how many children? I've got four sons. Mm -hmm. uh, my oldest son lives in France. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he was uh, all interested in the newspaper business since he was a kid, so he got into that. And uh, he worked for newspapers. <clears throat> Number two son, he lives in Virginia. Uh, he he went uh, he went to Washington. Uh, I don't know. He went to St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland. That's right across the street from the U.S. Naval Academy, by the way, in Annapolis. And uh, he became a, a senior staff citizen mm -hmm. or a senior staff scientist. I mean. And uh, his wife is a classmate of his. Then Ted here, he has a twin brother that lives in, in uh, uh, Kaneohe, Hawaii. <clears throat> Andy, he, he went to Geneva College, and then he went uh, over to the U uh, United Kingdom, and he got a degree at St. Andrews. Uh, and also another degree at, at Edinburgh University. And then he came back here and got a degree at Rutgers. And uh, now he, he is a head of, a, of a, a team with the Veterans Administration that scour the Pacific uh, and get uh, people, uh, service people to uh, sign up uh, on uh, the various programs, and uh, and then Ted, he can tell you more. <laughs> uh, no, you can go ahead. Uh, he spent about two and a half years in Brazil uh, teaching English and uh, learning all about coffee. <laughs> so that's where he learned how to become a an excellent dancer from, mm -hmm. from down there. And uh, he went to Westchester, and then he went to Rutgers, and he got a degree in, uh, what do they call it, urban planning or something, something like that. So I, I guess it was a couple of years ago, you had wound up with COVID, correct? W were, were you sick for a while? Did you recover pretty quickly or? Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, I didn't know I had it, I guess. <laughs> okay. So they ran some tests on 
Mm -hmm. So, and the next thing I know, I was in the University of Pennsylvania Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, I was only there, I guess, a week or so, or maybe a little more, and then they sent me to one, one, another place for assisted uh, living. Finally wound up here. Where were you when Pearl Harbor happened? It was a Sunday, or, um, I think it was either Saturday or Sunday. I didn't have a car, and uh, I went, I, by public transportation that morning, I went from uh, east of Pittsburgh to a place called, to a, a west part of Pittsburgh where my college roommate was, and we had lunch together, and we were wa we walked back to his place, and turned on the radio, and that's when we heard it. Mm -hmm. Pearl Harbor has been attacked. So I thought, boy, this is something. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and by the way, <clears throat> there's a book by a historian named Barbara Tushman. She, I think she was at Columbia. She wrote a book called Stillwell and the American Experience in China, which is an excellent book. She's got a million facts in there. It's about this thick. If you want to want to find out what went on there, read, mm -hmm. that, read that book. So any, any thoughts that you have on your service to your country? I'd say... Uh, Basically, it was a plus. The, the, of course, the, the damage and the death and everything that resulted from it, that that's detracts. If you live up to the standards that they serve by, well, you, you've got a, a uh, say, a, a dedicated organization with a, uh, I'll say, a, a, rightful, a rightful mission. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you for your time. Yeah. Thank you for your service and, you know, on, on a very long life. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, the opportunity.